Hi, my name's Simon Sandal. Um, I'm the head chef and owner of Baronia Kitchen in Hunters Hill. It all started about 32 years ago, um, back in the UK. I'm English born, grew up in a town called Rugby, um, and uh, just decided to find, follow my love and passion of cooking. And I still to this day hold the record for the biggest sit down dinner that was ever done at the Opera House. And that was for uh, three and a half thousand people. I've always sort of put my best foot forward in everything that I've done in my career. And um, yeah, look, I, I ended up becoming group chef. Um, I actually became group chef prior to that, opening up all the venues, um, which was great. It just made my job so diverse, you know, meeting people, managing people, um, you know, understanding, obviously having a massive understand of not only just running one business, but running multiple businesses. And look, it, it, it is a numbers game and, and there's a, you know, the, a lot that goes into it, but it's fun. Um, you know, and that obviously led me to, you know, going to state up to Brisbane, which was, you know, a lot of fun and, you know, had its challenges at the same time, but it was, you know, it just made the job more diverse. Um, so I ended up working with Matt for 17 years. Um, so I had a fantastic relationship, but there was always this uh, underlining hunger and I, you know, excuse the pun, but, you know, I always, you know, it's, it's one thing opening up businesses for somebody else, but I just had this urge that I just needed to go out and have a crack myself and you know it was a big call after 17 years and I just I made the jump and uh, resigned on very good terms with with Moran and the Morsel group and um, I um, ended up opening up a consultancy business um, which to my surprise my phone just went absolutely ballistic um, and that grew very quickly um, and then a year in, so with the consultancy, it was, it was almost the, the way I sort of structured it, it was no different to what I was doing with Moran, but I was just doing it for other entities, uh, separate businesses. So I'd go in and help people with their, you know, um, front of house, back of house, their HR, their kitchen, um, you know, implementing systems and procedures, which is something that I was always very good at. Um, and I sort of became a little bit self-taught back at the Sydney Opera House doing, doing the, um, the catering side of things because, you know, look, catering, I mean, I've done all up, done 21 New Year's Eves at the Sydney Opera House and, you know, you're feeding somewhere from eight to 10,000 people. If it's not organised and, and, and if you don't follow that process and systems, um, it, the wheels can fall off very quickly. So. In a sense, what I suppose what I mean by that is, you know, it becomes a numbers game in your ordering. Um, it becomes a numbers game in, in the staff um, that you allow for each um, segment of whatever function it is that you're building at that particular time. So, you know, we'd have something like eight different um, functions going on um, over the course of the evening on New Year's Eve at the Sydney Opera House. So it has to be organised. So. I'll always come back to the process. Process is everything for me. Um, from the minute you get out of bed to the minute you go back to bed, it's what you do in between, um, and and making sure you follow that process is you know which will help you achieve what you need to achieve throughout your career. Um, so then, yeah. So then I um, opened up the consultancy. Um, you know, I've got lots of clients on the books, you know, and they range from cafes to publicans to restaurants. Um, and again, look, it's, it's fun, you know, I enjoy that. Um, you know, at the same time, I'm running my own business here. So um, I've just launched um, Baroni Catering, um, which is, um, you know, obviously something that's quite within my blood and something that I want to grow for 2020. That's my, my personal goal for this year is to, is to build that side of the business. Um, I've got an adjacent building next door to Baronia Kitchen which we're going to um, convert into a function room. So yeah, it's, it, I suppose you know, we can, as much as we love this industry and, and we get out of bed, you've got to set yourself personal goals you know, and set yourself challenges and don't be afraid to to, to go out and, and, and challenge yourself and don't be afraid, and this is a big one, don't be afraid to make mistakes because not one of us, and this goes across all industries, no matter where you work, you only learn if you make the mistakes. You know, making a mistake two or three times, there's questions that need to be answered above and beyond that, but you know, you make the mistakes, learn from them, and then get them right the next time that you do it. I mean, ultimately, 
You know, if you, if you really have that desire uh, for food, um, and look, let's, let's face it, we all love food. We need food to survive. We need food to just get through the day. But I think if you've got that, that passion um, and drive um, to get into the food industry, I'm telling you now, get into it because it is so rewarding. I've always looked at the food industry as like, as, as like transient art. It's there one minute and it's gone the next. And you're only ever as good as your last meal that you put on a plate. So it is very rewarding. Um, and I think, you know, like I say, if you've got that passion and drive, go out, get it, study for it, work hard at it, and you will get the rewards um, in the long run. Um, look, food trends. Um, you now, I've been doing this for 32 years, and whilst the food industry has changed, there is no question it has changed. I think if there's one thing that the food industry always comes back to, it always comes back to the basics. And, you know, whilst you, know, you can have all this molecular gastronomy and you can have all these different food trends, they'll always come and go, but they'll always come back. If, you, if that makes any sense. Um, so um, that's, I mean, look, for me, that's what keeps me excited about the, the food industry. You know, there's, there's, it's, it's constantly evolving, you know, and so you, you can never sort of, you know, sit back and just expect, you know, to once you've done something that that's it forever, you know, and I suppose that's what drives me to get out of bed every day is that, is that constant change, you know, it's the constant change of the seasons, it's the constant change of food styles, food narratives, you know, and, and you know, and learning inspiration off other, off your peers as well, you know, I mean, you know, we've, we've got a, a massive exposure now through social media where, you know, that you, you've, you've got the opportunity to be able to see so much more. So, you know, whereas when I was growing up, you, you'd have to do stages and you'd have to go out and eat at these restaurants. You know, a lot of people now, they don't, you don't even need to do that because you've got so much exposure on social media. So I think, you know, through looking at all that sort of stuff, it does keep the industry and it keeps everybody on their toes, but it keeps the industry so diverse. Um, you know, but look, let's face it, people are becoming more food savvy now than they ha ever, ever have done. So, you know, coming back to that, you're only as good as your last meal, it's, it's really actually quite important. Um, look, the, the importance of um, studying and honing your, your, your skills for your career, I, I can't tell you how important it is, you know, to go and get your culinary management skills and your, um, your hospitality management skills is so important. I'm gonna be brutally honest here. I've, I've come from no educational background whatsoever. You know, for me, I didn't like school. Um, and it wasn't something that, that interested me enough to sit there in a classroom and study, right? But I'll always come back to this. If you're passionate about something, um, you will study it and you can do great things with it. So I was, you know, fortunate again, as I said before, to, to get the opportunity to go to catering college um, to study my career you know, and get my bachelor in culinary management and hospitality. Um, so, but I found that passion and that was, that was my driving force. Although I came from no school education, that was my driving force to, to make a headway in this, in this, this beautiful industry that we, we work in. Um, so look, it, for me, it's, it, it's, it's important because, you know, if you wanna, whatever you wanna do, people wanna see your skill level. And if you've trained and you've, you've had that discipline to, to go through that two, three, four year course, whatever that might be, um, people will look at that and, you know, that's a massive stepping stone for, for anyone's career. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's important, really important. So if you are looking to, to get into the industry, and it is an amazing industry, as I've, as I've told you, um, my advice would be, I've, I was very fortunate as a, as a young man, you know, that I had an amazing father that sort of mentored me um, in, the, in the way of, you know, he taught me a lot about honesty and integrity. And that's something that's really traveled through my career. It's something that I live by. Um, you know, it's, it's, you're born with it and you leave with it. And if you mess up in between, well, in my advice is you've got nothing. So keep your honesty, keep your integrity. Um, and probably one of the biggest key things is find yourself a mentor. You know, I've had a few mentors throughout my career and, you know, one of them was a, a, was a TAFE teacher. 
um, that sort of helped me get through college. As I've said, you know, I, I didn't have a schooling background. So I, when I went to college to start learning my career and I, I was passionate about it and I had that drive. But at the same time, because I, I wasn't interested in school, which I probably should have been interested in school. Well, I know I should have been interested in school looking back at it now, but I just didn't have that drive for school as I did for cooking. I had this mentor of this, um, one of my TAFE teachers, um, that helped me get through that process, you know, and, and you know, I sort of lent on for that advice and, you know, whatever it might be, you know, just find yourself that, that mentor that can, that can just steer you in the right direction, um, that you can ask the, the, the burning questions and don't be afraid to ask, ask people, you know, it's, it's, it's so important, you know, I think, I think, you know, people can tend to hold things inside and, and it, can, it can burn up inside of them and they can get a little bit confused. But I think if you go out and ask them questions and especially if you've got yourself a mentor, um, you can, it can start directing you and pointing you in the, right, in the right direction as to where you need to go. Obviously then you, you can make them decisions yourself and they're good, solid, calculated decisions. Guys, thanks for listening to me today and, and listening to about my amazing career and I, I really hope that each and every one of you guys have such an amazing career like I have and you enjoy it as much as I have. Look, if you've got any questions whatsoever, you can join me via the link for a live chat in the chat box um, and look no stu and no questions are stupid questions so far away ask me what you like and hopefully I can give you a suitable answer thank you very much hi my name is Bulane and I'm a student at William Blue College welcome to virtual open day my name is Rosie and I am a student ambassador at William Blue Hospitality College I'm Kira and I study at William Blue at Torrens University I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Business Hospitality Management. The reason why I chose to study at William Blue was because it was the only university that offered what I wanted to do, which it gave me the, the, op the options of being a chef and also learning about management. I'm currently studying a Bachelor of Culinary Management. So for the first two years, you basically learn about being a chef and you do your placement. And then the last year, you learn about front of house, managing, and throughout the whole three years, you're also learning about managing a business and you also get to learn about um, the business side and everything like that. I'm from the western suburbs and out in Camden. I did my HSC, I did not do an ATAR, so an ATAR isn't, isn't your life. I also did um, hospitality in high school. Um, I did struggle a lot in high school. William Blue actually helped me a lot um, to get through to the, where I am today. I um, just finished my associate degree in culinary management and now I'm doing my Bachelor of Business in hospitality management. I grew up in and around hotels because of my dad in the industry and that's where my passion sort of began. I've always loved people and interacting with others and helping people out and I think that I wanted a degree that was quite broad within hospitality, had many opportunities, especially with travel as well. It's been something that I still enjoy today. It was one of the best experiences that I'd ever experienced because I'd learned to be a chef and I was working with a big like hotel that has many different kitchens like there's hot kitchen, cold kitchen, room service so I was learning a lot of things and I was very grateful to have gotten that experience because I started as just a chef and I learned so much that I'm like very happy with what I got out of that. Some of the key milestones that I've achieved so far. I've worked in hospitality for about six years now, um, on and off, um, between restaurants and a few cafes here and there. Still out in, out in Camden and Norellan area, in the MacArthur area. I um, got the opportunity to work um, in a restaurant and got to run two sections by myself. I got to run the entree section that also had a few mains within it um, and I also got to um, run the dessert section as well which was absolutely amazing. My favourite section to um, run as well. I started working when I was 15. I was a food and beverage waitress just doing breakfast on a Sunday morning. Um, that was just because I was still in high school and when I got to the end of my school years, I, um, I found a real passion for it, it kept growing and because of my dad and the industry being all around, the real immersive experience wanted me to you know, continue my journey and I then discovered the Bachelor of Business in Hospitality Management and it's so broad, it offers so many opportunities and they're still coming around today as well. I do front office at a hotel, even the degree and the work that I do relates to each other and it's really helped me grow and hopefully sets me up for greater 
achievements in life? I studied the associate degree of culinary management um, and now I am doing the Bachelor of Business. I loved doing the associate degree in culinary management. I loved food, working with my hands, it's so practical. Um, the classrooms are really, really small, um, working with chefs that are still currently in the industry now. So the top three things that I could say I've learned is time management because as a student you have to learn to manage your time very well. Um, during my placement I was still studying and doing the placement which meant I was working full time and still studying as a full time student. So that means working five days, going to uni for two days and also having assessments and learning to balance that. That was one big thing I had to really learn how to manage. And um, secondly was a resilience. Um, it's, it's a big job, it's a difficult job, but if you love it, it'll, it's worth it. That's one thing I can say, it's definitely worth it. And the third thing I'll say is knife skills. I remember my first lesson at Crow's Nest. Um, yeah, <laughs> my knife skills weren't that great. And now I can cut things and I cut like onions and they look like microscopic pieces. So that's one thing I can say that I've really learned. The best and most exciting thing I'm really keen um, on doing in the future is opening up my own business. Um, probably more of a boutique catering business, um, moving more towards um, desserts and you know more grazing tables. Um, at the moment I am slowly launching my own business, um, Rosie's Cakes and Desserts, um, out at home. Um, so super keen, if anyone wants a cake, hit me up. <laughs> I'm excited about moving up in the industry. Um, as a female, I've always thought that um, the kitchen was mainly male like based and now that I'm a chef I can like I'm learning that it's not only just male base, based and I'm seeing a lot more female chefs like currently I work at a West Hotel and the executive chef is um, a female and I was very happy about that because you know it's good to see females um, rising up in the kitchens and stuff like that. My advice um, for anyone that's um, excited or passionate about cooking and food, um, definitely go out, do, do some classes. There's Jamie Oliver, Oliver classes I've done before I even known William Blue. Um, that's what made me more excelled. Um, read books, watch TV shows, watch YouTube shows. Go ahead, do what you love. Um, I've learned you know, through William Blue for sure. Um, I've also taught myself some of some really hard desserts um, that I've never known how to make um, thanks to also um, talking to my chefs, um, also with YouTube as well. Um, that's really helpful. Um, you know, Instagram followers, um, little videos you can find anywhere. Um, just go for it and, you know, experiment, you know, try things. Don't, don't be scared. It's okay if you stuff up, you know, make it again. It's okay and current trends. Um, one thing that I've noticed is dietary requirements. Everyone has dietary requirements. It's either you're vegan, um, you're over lacto, you are pescatarian, or you have a nut allergy or you're gluten free. Well, one thing I've learned at um, one of the courses we actually did was a dietary requirements course and you do it for um, 12 weeks. And through the 12 weeks, you're learning something new every week with due to, with, to do with dietary requirements and I think that's a very important course. I currently work at West Hotel and their menu is heavily um, vegan and vegetarian um, influenced, meaning that if you're vegan or vegetarian, you won't have a problem. They'll always have something there for you. Turning a passion into a career, I think this is a big thing for me because I, I like law. So I did go to Wollongong Uni and I got in um, for the Bachelor of Arts, which I was supposed to do law. And I did like it, I was very excited. And once I saw William Blue had what I wanted, I took that with, with no options. Like I was like, early entry, cool, but I want to do this because I love being a chef. I think doing what you love is very important because you excel. If like law is hard and I feel like to, ex to excel in that I needed to have loved it. And as a chef, I am excelling. I'm meeting all my targets. I'm doing very well and I'm very happy with how much I've grown in the past two years since I've studied, st since I've started studying at William Blue College. So doing what you love is very important. It's also like creating satisfaction for yourself, being happy with yourself and being able to go through your day not worrying, oh, I have to go to that boring job. It's like, I'm excited to go to work. I can't wait to see what I'm gonna learn today, what I'm gonna make today and just like that. The advice I wish I received um, was 
you know, don't you know, make mistakes. It's okay um, if you make a mistake. You know, do it again. That's that's all. Of, that's the whole part of learning. Um, we also, you know, the best thing to do if you do join William Blue, um, you know, in the kitchen, especially make mistakes. It's okay. Like. Once I made a mistake in the classroom, um, in the kitchen at Crow's Nest, and we we're making a, a flourless cake, and I forgot to add a bit extra butter to it, and then I cooked it, and the chef's like, I was like, oh, why is this butter here? And he's like, you were meant to add it to to the recipe, and I was like, oh no, like, is it going to turn bad? And, he, and we took it out of the oven, and it, it, the crumb was amazing, like, it was the one of the best flourless cakes I've made. So, and I have, the, I use that recipe today. So it's, yeah, little things can be, like little mistakes can turn into really good things. Some mistakes, you just might have to fail and you know, you know, step back right up and you know, work it out and you'll be fine. Most excited about in the future is that I've used uni to help me find opportunities to find what I really want to do. Um, it's helped me find a placement overseas as well and it's something that I'm really excited about because even though it's for a short period of time, it's something that can hopefully set me up for later achievements in the future with different careers or within other parts of the industry even. I'm really excited about my placement which will be in London or I hope it will be in London. Um, I will be doing front office still but it's such a big step, it's overseas, it's with a new team in a different style of hotel. It's such an exciting opportunity because it's something that will hopefully allow me to learn and progress throughout my career and find a lot more of what I would want to do in the future. My advice for someone who's passionate about cooking is to get on it, like just to do it, go out there, go to the classes, go to the master classes that the celebrities hold and just come to even our open days because you'll see what we do. You get to see how it is to be a chef for a day and we also have the day in the life. So through that you get to see how it is to be a chef and I definitely do encourage if you really are serious about food and love food that you do do it because loving what you do is the best thing you could do for yourself. So the advice I give to an emerging chef is that to work hard because there's no shortcuts in life or even being a chef, you have to put in the work to get the result and to be resilient. Studying at William Blue has really helped me with this opportunity. <laughs> Just drop it in there, drop it in there. Start again. That was really bad. Oh my God, I'm talking in third person. <laughs>